I'm Melissa Tosetti. I am the founder of The Savvy Life, and this is my colleague. I'm Kevin Gibbons. I am a uh, dutiful employee. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I would call you a cash flow planning extraordinaire. <laughs> Co Co-founder and partner, yes. <laughs> uh, so you may be wondering, if you're joining us for the first time, what a Savvy Life is, what that means. Well, in a nutshell, because it is a very broad scope of an idea, but in a nutshell, living a savvy life is about creating a strong financial foundation while enjoying the journey. And doing that simply by being very purposeful with how you spend your time and with how you spend your money. And uh, Tinker's joining us. Hi, Tinker. For the record, that's my mom. Oh. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> She got on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, if you are watching us through the link, thesavvylife.com, that's fantastic. Please continue to, to watch. If you would like to be able to interact with us, very much like my mom is right now, um, by typing in questions, uh, typing in comments as we go along, we love that. Mm -hmm. That that helps us tremendously. It's the whole purpose of this uh, venue. Yeah. yeah, to be able to stream and, and interact versus just us you know, shooting information to you. Um, the way you do that is you can register through Caffeine TV. It's a very simple process. I think you answer maybe five questions. Uh, you do that, just make sure that you check your spam folder uh, in case that confirmation email hits there instead. And then once you do that, uh, you can interact with us. Yep, yeah. you go ahead and uh, put down, uh, type in comments. If you enter a comment, we will see it immediately. We may not actually reply to it immediately because if we're in the middle of a thought, we'll complete that thought, but we will, but we will get to you. So, you know, yeah. be patient. Yeah. You want to, don't want to have a whole bunch of ADD bouncing back and forth too much. Because... It gets very distracting, and we don't want to do that to you guys. Yeah. yeah. So what are we talking about today? Uh, today we're talking about spending, one of our of favorite subjects. <laughs> so the the idea is to spend smart, right? It's not living a savvy life is not about not spending. Mm -hmm. um, it is about how do you become very purposeful, and how do you do that when so many different things are trying to distract you, right? We have the as I like to call them, the diabolical marketing geniuses that are the Costco's, the the Trader Joe's, the Amazon Trader Joe's, not Trader Joe's, Targets, Target, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Amazon Primes, right? So we have we have those companies that work very hard to influence us in our spending decisions. We are not anti-retail by any sense of the word, but we just want to make sure that when we are making a purchase, we are making a decision rather than just kind of going about our day. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to actually introduce to you this audience, I believe for the first time, or, or maybe it's the first time, one of our favorite tools for savvy living, which is a spending book. Okay. And a spending book is simply like, for example, I have a little blank notebook here. You can see, um, that you use to write down the things that you want to purchase. Okay. So this is not necessarily where you're going to put your grocery list. Uh, it's not where you're going to put, you know, the things that you have to buy. This is really where you're going to put thought into the things that you want to buy. Okay. So this is where you become very intentional. Um, some of the things that you can put in here are some examples of what, of how people use it is, uh, let's just say that you are a fan of Maria Kondo and you are, you know, Maria Kondo or tidying with Maria Kondo on Netflix, which is, the, the rage right now, and understandably, she's a fantastic concept, but you are getting rid of a ton of items in your closet, okay? Getting rid of all those items, and now you realize that there's not a lot left that you're that spark joy for you. So what you have an opportunity to do is go into your closet and look for what's missing, right? This is actually straight out of our Savvy Wardrobe webinar. Well, yeah. Kevin doesn't like giving that one. <laughs> not one of my strong things. Yeah. You could if you wanted to because you I, heard it so much. But. I think, yeah, not one of my <laughs> but, but yeah, so that idea of what's missing and then what you do is you write down what's missing in your spending book. So now you have an opportunity to fill in the gaps of your wardrobe, right? So that's one example. So then when you go to the store, instead of just kind of wandering around to figure out what you want to buy, you've decided in advance what you uh, intentionally have thought about that we're, that is going to be able to either let you wear more of your clothes because you're you know, purchasing that missing piece, whatever that might be. Yeah, or another use is if there are stores that you like that have quarterly sales or semi-annual sales, then you can make a list of the things that you want to buy so that when the sales come around, you know what you're going to get. And that has two purposes. 
Uh, I'll use an example I do. I do a lot of uh, craft work and things like that. I buy a lot of stuff at hardware stores. Both uh, Melissa's husband, Paul, and myself were dangerous to be let loose in the Home Depot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so what I do is I make a list of the things that I that I want, not necessarily I need right now, but um, that I want so that when the sale comes around, I know what I'm going to go buy rather yeah. than just going, oh, it's a sale and getting all starry-eyed. And the other thing is that if I say I need this tool and I don't need it right now, I have it on my list. I don't go and buy it now because I know that I'm going to buy it at that sale. So mm -hmm. it keeps me from buying things ahead of time when I know that I can buy them at a more advantageous time. And it gives me a plan and a map for when I go into the store when I do have that sale to take advantage of it. So that, that that's a really useful useful way to to, to to use this many book. I think of that as almost the the master's program of living a savvy life. There there are layers to it, right? You start off just by realizing where your trigger points are. You know, a lot, we talk about this a lot. A lot of clients not necessarily that excited about their jobs. They're decompressing <coughs> during their lunch hour by shopping on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Um, so that would be like starting to realize those things. That's one level of living a savvy life. Then you have the next level of, you know, creating your spending book. And then the next level is exactly like Kevin said, where you're really thinking through and you're thinking in the long term in the next three months, six months, 12 months. And that goes a little bit. I want to talk more about the spending plan in a second, but this is a nice segue into the, um, the, uh, conversation actually per nine King. Do I say right. that correctly? Yep. 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 <laughs> uh, Asked us about last week, which is about how do you find deals? Okay. So one thing I want to be careful of, and sorry, I just shook everybody. One thing I want to be careful of is that a lot of times, um, thank you for sharing our broadcast, Natasha. Uh, a lot of times when it, we think of deals, we think of this idea of, of splurging or almost this immediate idea of overspending comes to mind, right? Because deals can very much trigger a, let's go spend money. What we mean by, by deals is really this idea of timing purchases for when an item typically seasonally goes on sale, mm -hmm. okay? And so, you know, an example of that would be, right now it's January, so uh, holiday decor. <laughs> cheap, you can still find yeah, it. if you can still find it, it's, it's really cheap. But we're in, that pro we're in that time now where we're actually, uh, from a clothing perspective, we're actually at the peak season, if not going into clearance uh, items about of winter wear, yeah. right? So if you're looking for a new ski jacket, wh whatever that might be, even though it seems like it's peak season for us right now, for retailers, they're thinking about spring. They want to clear their inventory out. Yeah. They're always, it, this is what drives us crazy, right? This is why Christmas items are on floors on July 5th. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's because, yeah, retailers, they're all constantly trying to I want to say push the next season, but they're trying to shove it down our throats, right? Yeah. They are. <laughs> they are. Gentle way of saying it. Um, so, so yeah, that idea. Um, another thing that is going to be uh, going on sale in the coming weeks. Um, I'm not a football person per mm. se. I have respect for the sport, but I have no idea when the Super Bowl is. When is it? About a month away or so. Okay. They're doing the 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 conference playoffs this weekend yeah okay so as we start to approach super you know the middle of february yeah the, the the coming weeks in this in the super bowl then big screen tvs are going to be on sale those big screen tvs are going to be at an even better price after yeah. because retailers want to clear the inventory that didn't get sold right because they're, they're buying more right now uh because they know that there's going to be a big need for it yeah yeah so i, I think that that is really key is looking at how you time your purchases um you know, it's, it's, it's kind of the old thing that, that everybody used to talk about in the in the stock market, you know, buy low, sell high. It's still kind of the idea of looking for where the demands are, mm -hmm. where the retailers see the demands. And then as soon as the retailers no longer see that demand and want to start getting rid of the inventory, that's when you want to go in and get the sale because that's when you'll get the best deal. You have to pay attention because companies are moving faster and faster and faster. Like you're talking about the, the, the TVs big screen TVs, my guess is that the stores will have a sale the following three to five days after the Super Bowl, and within a week, that's mm -hmm. gone. So you have a very narrow window. But if you can understand yeah. how these cycles work, then you can take advantage yeah. of it. Exactly, what, what yeah. It is. It's, it's, it's becoming aware, and we really have seen a big change in the retail industry and how they're managing those mm -hmm. things in the last couple of years. It's 
it's a bit of the wild west right now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We talked about this. I can't remember if we talked about it on Caffeine TV or if it was a conversation you and I had with, with regards with regards to the subject uh, offline. But it's this whole concept of just-in-time inventory, mm -hmm. and that's something that uh, manufacturers use where they don't want to have an inventory of all their raw materials in the factory because they've paid for it, it's sitting on the shelf, it's not doing anything. So in industry, they've got this concept of just-in-time inventory where the raw materials arrive on a truck and within 24 hours, they're being assembled into the final product to be shipped out. Um, Retailers are starting to go with that same mentality. They don't want inventory sitting on their shelves because that's money they've invested that's not doing anything. So they want to get the material in from their suppliers and turn around and sell it as quickly as they can. So that's what's driving yeah. this acceleration in all these sales cycles and everything else. Yeah. Making more challenges. You get to be responsive. You have to be aware and be responsive. Having that spending book that Melissa talked about lets you do that because you don't have to see a sale and go, oh crap, there's a sale coming up, what do I want to buy? There's a sale coming up, I know what I, I, know I want what to I buy. buy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's, so just, you know, a couple other seasonal items that are coming up just in the next month or two. So in uh, February, the CES Consumer Electronics mm -hmm. Show happens in um, Las, Vegas. Las Vegas. Big, huge show. This is when everybody... It's actually going on now. They, start, they moved it up. There's, oh, it's there's, in there's January. Some, there's some of it going on now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not sure how long it goes for, but yeah. <laughs> so what happens, though, is that they're launching. This is when they're, they're showing off all their latest technology products, right? So what happens is after that show, then those products start to hit mm -hmm. retailers. So after that show and kind of leading up to that show is when retailers want to get rid of last year's models. So last year's models are going to be at a better discount. Not to say that everything, technology is kind of funny about that. There's certain things that just never really go no. on sale. But if you, again, if you're aware and you can be just a little bit proactive, the fun thing about timing purchases is it gives you, it creates a little anticipation, which is a good thing. It helps you make sure, not make sure, but it helps you to enjoy and appreciate that item that you're purchasing that much more. But it helps you also think through you know, you get really excited about an item in a store, but if you think that that item is going to be going on sale in shortly, then it just creates a little bit of a cooling off period. Yeah. And then when you do purchase that item, you just value it more. And there's a lot to say for that because, you know, I'll go back to, I promise I'm not obsessed with Marie Kondo, although I wrote a fantastic article about, <laughs> <laughs> about her show and how we've been talking about her, her thought process of, only having things around that surround you that spark joy, that, that you actually really, really create a, a spark an emotional, um, it's, a, it's a bit, it's a bit off. I, I worded it much better in the article. Go to the, go to the website, SavvyLife.com. It's the latest article that we just published. But the idea is that we are just consumers in our culture here in the U.S. And we're surrounded by stuff that not doesn't necessarily give us pleasure and so the idea of creating a spending book you are deciding in advance what does give you pleasure and uh and making those purchases and making those decisions in advance just helps you to again anticipate and then on the other side of it appreciate what you have that's huge it's a big lesson i learned from my grandparents of, of taking care of what you have yeah. and valuing it and i'm not just saying that because my mom's on today <laughs> Another thing that I use a spending book for, uh, and I've talked about this in a lot of the purchases that I've made in when I uh, purchased my, my, my last car, I'm a researcher. Uh, if I want to buy something, I go through, I look at all the different models, all the different features, and I do compares and contrasts and do price evaluations and, and performance evaluations and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, by doing that and then putting the result into the spending book, I'm pretty sure when I go to buy this thing that this is the one that I want. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've done that ahead of time, so I'm not making a snap judgment mm -hmm. to coincide with the sales price, and it lets me buy with confidence. You know, this, this, this is something that mm -hmm. is going to give me joy. This really is the one that I want. And again, just doing that kind of stuff and getting that down on uh, paper or in a, in a computer is just that much more satisfying to have more control of your life. And I think that's one of the big things. We talk about this an awful lot, that you're being bombarded all different ways to spend money and to uh, look at all kinds of different products. And a lot of times you are reacting and you're not in control. This gives you a way to get more 
control over what you're doing, right. how you're spending your money, and that's a real key to sat personal satisfaction. You said something in our last session that that stuck with me, and I've actually thought about it quite a bit, which is that when you are going to go make a purchase, especially if it's a tool, that you are going to make that purchase one time. You're mm -hmm. going to invest in quality, and it's going to last you yeah. uh, for the long haul. And I and I love that because again, that's not a mentality that we typically have here. Yeah. Uh, it's a there's so much that is cheap there that that <coughs> is produced cheaply that, and we're not really thinking through. Um, another article we just published actually this week was the nine savvy money habits and savvy money habit number eight is to know when to invest and know when to bargain shop. Mm -hmm. There is a time to buy the cheaper item, uh, but there is definitely a time yeah. to to go ahead and invest in an item that is going to be sure. to be with you or, you know, spark joy. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing I'd love to talk about with the spending book is there's there's another layer to it. So. Actually, I'm, I'm having multiple thoughts just dump into my brain real quick because I want to make sure that I don't lose this either. One of the other benefits of creating a spending book is that you're not only writing the things that you want to buy, but it also gives you an opportunity to write down the details. Mm -hmm. So an example is that if you have uh, children that um, multiple sizes, right, and you realize that there's a sale coming up and they need certain things or you want to purchase them, you know, certain things for family wedding or, or whatever that might be, um, that child isn't necessarily with you. When you go, you can just write down everybody's sizes, and then when you go and you can grab what you need. That's not necessarily the best example. Uh, or maybe that you want to frame something in your home, yeah. write down the, the size of the frame that you need, and so that when you stumble on the perfect frame, you can pull the trigger knowing that that is the right size. Yeah, yeah that, that that's a big one. My wife and I collect antiques, and my wife likes... Uh, paintings and antique frames and we'll go shopping somewhere and she'll find the perfect frame and then it's a matter of if we forgot our spending book it's a, it's a matter of well do we think that this is the right size <laughs> do we buy it anyway with the idea that someday we're going to find a painting that's going to fit to it or what's happening more often is oh we'll go ahead and buy this kevin and then you can cut it apart and put it back together to the size i need um which... i can see the pain in your eyes when you just said that yeah, I've done that several times with varying degrees of success, so I, I get kind of nervous cutting up 200-year-old uh, antique wood frames and putting them back together. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so spending books to have to have that type of yeah. thing that for for recording what you really need and you know sizes, colors, patterns, whatever uh, yeah. is really uh, really important. It's embarrassing. Uh, Paul and I spent a very long time. My husband Paul and I spent a very long time where. Every light bulb in our house was a different hue. Yeah. <laughs> so I learned to Very add the, the light bulb types that we yep. <laughs> that we yeah. use in our spending book. Yeah. So uh, again, because I want my house to look nice, you know, yeah. and, and not confused. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing that other things that you can use your spending book for that are very enriching that I absolutely love is you can use it for the. Uh, books that you want to buy. You can use your Amazon um, wish, list. Mm -hmm. wish list if you want to. But, you know, my husband, uh, Paul, and I, one of our favorite things to do is go to used bookstores because there's treasure in there. And I'll write down my favorite mm -hmm. mystery authors or, you know, classic authors and uh, what's what's missing, something that I know that I, that I want to buy. I don't know. I just get more pleasure in looking at this than grabbing my phone and going on Amazon yeah. and trying to search and find find what I want. Uh, so that's one. I will also write down actually movies or television shows that I want to watch because I have a finite amount of time in order to watch what I want to watch. And then um, I want to make sure that, that I use that time appropriately. And again, you know, you've got your Netflix wish list if you want, but sometimes I can find something on YouTube. But I don't want to go on YouTube and just start swimming around in yeah. the volume that, that is there. I want to go straight to what I want to watch. Go ahead, jump in. This is one that you've said many times, and it falls right along the idea. Restaurants. Oh. Want to go get something to eat? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John Kai Ying is, is right. YouTube is a black hole. Yes, that's a problem. <laughs> you want to go get something to eat. What do you want to go eat? Oh, I don't know. And that's a favorite conversation that happens in every household. Mm -hmm. If you have a list in your spending book of, hey, these are the six restaurants that I've heard about over the past five months. I want to go try one. What do you think about this? Now you can cut through that uh, uh that confusion and, and that aggravation. So again, that's anything that you are thinking that you might want to buy in the next six to 12 months, put it in the spending book. And so you'd have that as a reference. And yeah. Uh, yeah, restaurants are a great one just to, just to cut through that, that, that confusion. 
Yep. So. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll also add that one of the things that I love using my spending book for is to write down the experiences that I want to have or my family wants to have. Mm -hmm. So we live here in, uh, well, I'm, I live in Redwood City, California. Um, actually, Caffeine TV's uh, headquarters are just a couple blocks that way. You can't see my hands that way. <laughs> and um, uh, here in the, in the Bay Area, there's so much to do, so many different things to experience. Or my uh, in-laws were so kind to go and retire in wine country. <laughs> so they live in Healdsburg. So we drop off our San Dante and we'll go and explore different wineries. But if you've ever had experience of going up to wine country, the um, volume it's of so, wine yeah, is daunting. Yeah. It is. And for me... You know, wine tastes good, but I'm not a huge wine fan, or I should say that I, um, I, I'm not a wine connoisseur by any sense of the word. What I want to experience is I want to experience the architecture. I want to experience, the, you know, anybody that's got a cool garden experience. And so if I'm looking in the San Francisco Chronicle and I see somebody uh, has, there's an article about something that looks really unique, I will write that winery in my book because there is no way I'm going to remember the name of that winery. And then you get up there and there, then there's the question of realistically, and we're talking about wineries, but this goes for any type of experience. Mm -hmm. How many sites do you want to go see in a fixed amount of time? Yeah. How many wineries do you yeah. want to go when you go visit your in-laws? Three's good. <laughs> Three's good. Eight is, you know, that's a full day, and that's tiring. And so, you know, but uh, even if you manage the alcohol consumption, by the time you get to number seven, you're not even remembering what you drank or what number one looked like. Not because you're drunk. Just because you're in an over the sensory overload and you're tired. Yeah. So being able to, using the spending book to help prioritize not only your money, but your time is uh, a really valuable use of it. Yeah. A couple of things on our in our spending book right now is we want to go to Ana Nueva Beach mm -hmm. to uh, go see the elephant seals. Um, is it elephant seals? Yes, elephant, elephant seals. seals. Uh, get, I, well, we don't want to actually watch them give birth on, on them. But they're ha it's the birthing season and the pups are out there and you can take those in shores. Just the things like that that again aren't immediately going to come to mind, but that is a seasonal thing. Uh, yes, it is not too far from Big Sur. It is down that area. Uh, it is. I, it's it's down. And Nuevo is down by like Half Moon Bay. It's on the coast, right? Yeah, isn't Big Sur down by Monterey? Yeah, so it's not quite that far down, but it's okay. down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this, and we now get to California geography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, it it's 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 pretty well known. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, um, yeah. So just that idea of being. Ultimately, what it comes down to is your spending book actually becomes your, the story of what you want your life to look like. And yep. I absolutely love that. The whole concept of living a savvy life is about being purposeful with the experiences you want, the things that you want to buy. It's just that we have to look at that from a financial perspective because you got you have to figure out how to finance that stuff. And that's, yeah. that's actually what we do. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, Anna Nuevo is actually not near Hearst Castle. It's a bit north of that. Uh, yeah, so uh, there, there are some other areas like Cambria um, that they do, that, uh, that they have elephant seals and stuff. This is, this is actually between Santa Cruz and Pescadero. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Pescadero, you can go see the goats at Harley Farm. So there's so much to do around here. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. It's a bit farther north than, 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 than Monterey, but yeah. still, again, it's on the Central Coast. Yeah. That being said, Hearst Castle has been on our spending book uh, multiple times. It's a yeah. fantastic place. Yeah. Been there several yeah. times. I always, like, always like going there. Uh, we went to the beach near Hearst Castle to yep. see them. Yeah. Yep. There, yeah. There's Dark, definitely a beach down, down there that, yeah. that has uh, that experience. Yeah. Yeah. So we've talked about the spending book. And I think okay. that's really useful. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the logistics of how to time purchases, how different sales cycles run. We talked a little bit about that, but... Uh, Again, and where to get some of the best resources for uh, getting that type of information? Yeah, Google, Dr. Google is your friend. It's if you if you Google seasonal sales, there mm -hmm. there's there's enough general information to really help you there. Um, however, again, there's like a master's degree of being yep. able to time those purchases. Yeah. And so Pan Kai Yang has put down uh, Slick Deals and KinjaDeals.com, and those are those are good references uh, yeah. as, as well. Um, we get news flyers, old-fashioned paper news flyers mm -hmm. that we'll talk about that. Uh, you can also start getting a history from your favorite stores because most businesses are creatures of habit, and they'll have their store, they'll have their their sales cycles 
same time every year. Mm -hmm. So if you get used to going to a specific store and they have their fall sale, you know, the second week of September, it's a pretty good chance that the following year they're going to have a sale the second week of September. Yeah, and it's uh, if you think of just the the seasons in themselves, right? So spring is coming up. Mm -hmm. Spring print. print Spring cleaning products are going to be at the best price of the year. What I typically do if I need anything, I'll buy for what will get me through to the next year. Mm. Uh, I'll, I do that also because I don't want to think about it. Yeah. I don't want to run out of something and, and have to think about it. And yeah. so that I don't mind. There's certain things I really don't mind stockpiling for. Yeah. If you have the storage space for it, and, you know, I, I, yeah. I think that's a that's a key is one, you have the storage space. Two, you are going to use it. You're going to actually use it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. And you remember where it is. There's <laughs> nothing more frustrating than to buy something. And the example that I think we used a lot was buying shoe polish. Yes. Buy a can of shoe, yeah. a, 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 a tube of shoe, of shoe polish and then not being able to find it, going to buy another one the day before you need your shoes to be serviceable. And then the following day, you find the old shoe polish. So the, the real keys with stockpiling is make sure you're going to use it. And make sure you put it in a place where you're going to be able to find it. That's really, really key. It's a little bit of an aside to that side story to that. So um, what I call BS or before I was savvy, um, we, I had ex a really negative experience around stockpiling and not being able to find what I, what mm -hmm. I had purchased. So our group, we go up to Tahoe or, or somewhere where we can find snow every President's Day weekend and um, go and play in the snow. Not yeah. skiing, we're talking about inner tubes and snow discs. And we were getting close to, to that time. It was a, a day or two before we were getting ready to go and I went to go pack and I realized I could not find my shell, my snow uh, um, gear. And I'm looking, I'm tearing the house apart, couldn't find it. And I got so angry because I knew I had it. But a, and it, a shell is something, it's, it's just the outerwear, so it packs down really, really tight, right? And so I'm looking for something very small. So finally, I break down and I go and I buy a new shell for like $70. And this, again, is the time where $70 was a lot of money. But at least I knew that if I could find it next time, I'd always, I'd, I'd be wearing it, you know, for the next 10, 15 years. So I go and I purchase it and we go up to Tahoe and... The very next morning, we get ready to go out into the snow, and I go to put my foot in my boot, and guess what I found? <laughs> <laughs> I had put my shell in my in my snow boot so that I'd find it next year. <laughs> yeah. Make it ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, to this day, when you said, when you mentioned that about knowing where to find it, I had this, like, <laughs> uprising yeah. of anger at myself, and that was 15, 17 yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, all, we all have stories like that. I, 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 yeah. do, I do the same thing, and it's just... You know, you just feel so frustrated because you could have put that seven dollars to something yeah. much more, you know, much more useful. Oh yeah, yeah. cocktails. <laughs> so the reason I say that too, I share that too, though, is because first of all, it's hilarious. But second of all, it happens to the best of us. We by no means sit here and are dishing advice that we just think is a good idea. You know, we have had the negative experiences. Yeah. We've worked. You know, to us, it's interesting to figure out how do you get on the other side of that, yeah. and so. So when we go in a couple of weeks, I'll have to make sure, make sure we know where it is. <laughs> I'll right. report on Facebook that I found my gear. <laughs> yeah, very, very, very important. Yeah. Uh, other things about market research. We talked a lot about looking for good deals. Um, I'll come back to just the fact of, you know, making sure that you get the quality that you want. And that's a very loaded statement get the quality that you want that does not mean the best quality that goes back to our savvy habit number eight sometimes you only want something that's going to last for one use or one year or one season there's no reason to spend a horrendous amount of money for something that's going to get thrown away or is going to sit unused for yeah. uh, an excess excessive amount of time matching the quality to the need so that you match the purchase properly i think is a, is, mm -hmm. is a key part to that one thing I do want to talk about is different websites. There's a lot of websites out there that will help you, you, you know, find deals, but they have to make money somehow. Um, so I have had a lot of clients that have used Ebates, right? Hey, Travis. Um, Ebates is a great, it, it basically it's just rebates, right? Yeah. You get uh, you get actual money back for different things that you purchase. The thing that you have to be very, very careful of is that they're pushing 
products to you, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're, they're, they're showing you all the different things that you can buy and get an Ebate for. Just make sure that you're only purchasing the things that you are actually going to use. Because yep. the minute you spend on something that you don't need or you don't actually really want and it's just going to be sitting in the corner, then that's when uh, that's when you actually have spent more money than you've ever, ever yep. saved. Hey, Travis, it's good to see you here. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll throw out another uh, family um, uh, reference. Uh, my sister, uh, I love her. Uh, my, my sister. <laughs> you always, you always <laughs> reference family. I do, I do. Um, my sister has been very successful in her life, and she has, and she's comfortably well off. So she doesn't have to worry too much about money. She is a big one who will see a five hundred dollar item on sale for three hundred dollars and buy it just so that she can save two hundred dollars. And she feels so good because she saved two hundred dollars. And I've never been able to convince her is that no, you didn't save two hundred dollars. You spent three hundred dollars. No, but I saved. No, you did not save it. So she only saved two hundred dollars if she was really determined to buy that thing at five hundred dollars. So sales are only are still only useful to you if you really need slash want the product. If you're just buying it because it's a good deal because it's on sale, stop. Take the time. Yeah. Do you really need slash want it? Then you then make that decision. Yeah, I, I agree. Because then otherwise it again it goes back to <laughs> <laughs> Maria Kondo, uh, this idea of anything that is in your house that you're not actually using is it's it's clutter, it's money that could have been spent on something else, and that's another tool that that Kevin and I both use whenever we're shopping and something catches our attention that we didn't necessarily walk in to, to make that purchase. Mm. One of the things that we'll just ask ourselves is, what else would I spend that money on? And because we are very experiential, is that the right word? Uh, we're very much about travel. Uh, if, uh, about doing things rather than actually purchasing things, we typically will compare it to an experience we might have. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I'm not a shoe person, but I really love boots. If I see a pair of boots that catches my attention, my it's it's a trigger now. My trigger is to ask myself, okay, so that amount of money, do I really, really love those boots? Or would I rather spend that money on the, a lunch for the next time that you know um, Paul and Dante and I go down to Monterey. We have you know that that's the equivalent of that. So everything is about the equivalence. It's not again about not spending. And trust me, I pulled my trigger on plenty of boots, sure. but I love them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 all intentional. So, exactly, like, you know, intentional and purposeful. I, 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 I think that's a real key. Yeah, exactly. And you know, let us know as we're going along. Again, this is interactive. If you have any specific questions that you have for us about anything around day-to-day -day personal finance, that is what we do. Um, very, just to give you an idea of the specific topics that we very often cover in uh, presentation speeches and in uh, webinars is we cover travel, um, how to find more money to travel and where to get the great travel deals, one of our favorite conversations. Um, how to create a spending book, how to, how to create a budget that you can live within. Other topics, food. That's one of our favorite topics yep. is talk about all things food. How do you become very purposeful when you dine out? So you really can go to those nice restaurants. And then how do you, if you, whether you really enjoy cooking or you don't enjoy cooking, how do you, how do you figure out how to do more of it so that you can, again, dine out more or have those yep. other experiences? And how can you make the most out of your cooking at home? experience as well and do that in a cost enjoyable, enjoyable yeah way. yeah so. i love food too Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um with some of the other topics that we cover we actually do a presentation on the home it's one of the reasons why you know i keep bringing up marie kondo this is a topic that we've been covering for 10 years now we have an entire chapter dedicated this is a good chance for me to actually pull out a copy of our book Living the Savvy Life by Melissa Tosetti and Kevin Gibbons. There is an entire chapter in here dedicated to the home. And again, that idea about being purposeful, only having things in your home that, that again, spark joy. It's just, yeah. the you words just them. keep coming to mind. <laughs> so question, do you have advice on specific places to recommend to buy, f buy food? That y'all recommend people buying from. Uh, oh, for, oh, places in general. Uh, wow. Um, God, there are so oh. many. <laughs> uh, <cool>. Okay. <laughs> uh, so if you are single, um, if you are a one person household um, or you have roommates and you're just buying for yourself, Trader Joe's is going to be one of your best bets because they really do right by, you know, small, small it's, it's not quite Costco prices, but in, you know, in smaller quantities um, with the exception of fruit or produce and uh, no, actually specifically fruit and meat products. 
everything else is fantastic prices. You, yeah. Did you want to jump in? Um, I, you know, I think that there are, you can buy where you like the quality, all mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and uh, everybody talks about Whole Foods. Whole Foods does have some really good quality stuff. Uh, you pay for it. And so if you go to a place like Whole Foods and you go to a place like Safeway, you may say, look, this Safeway food is just absolutely horrible. I don't like it. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to eat it. Okay. That's your choice. Personally, most of the grocery stores that are in the United States are pretty decent quality, depending on you know, where you live. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. You know, the, the, those are good deals. Um, uh, one thing that I will say is, again, regardless for food or whatever you're doing, look at what the purpose is and buy accordingly. Um, our group likes to drink a lot. Uh, and There's about so, 20 of us that yeah. are really good friends. Yeah, yeah we, we like to drink a lot. Uh, and Melissa's husband, Paul, is a very creative mixologist. But one of the things that we've learned is that if you're making a mixed drink, there's absolutely no reason to buy a high-end alcohol, all right? If you're going to make vodka, a vodka drink and put tonic in it and soda in it and grapefruit juice and orange juice in it, there is no reason to buy an expensive high-end vodka. You're not going to taste it. So th that's a very specific example, but it kind of goes into the same thing. Um, one of the really big things, uh, you know, people look for extra virgin olive oil. This was a big thing for a while ago. I'm buying very high-quality olive oil. If you're cooking with it, you're degrading all of us. Yeah, yeah. If you're making a dip for bread or if you're making a very simple salad where the dressing is very key, yes, then kind of then it makes sense to have a high-end oil. But but for most applications, you're wasting your money. So tie the application to the product wherever you go buy it. So what I love about this is everything today keeps coming back to savvy habit number eight, which is know when to invest yeah. and when to bargain shop. And it's so I, you know, I pulled a couple books so I could just grab them and, and show you guys books that we typically will talk about here and there. And the one book I didn't uh, bring up was a book actually a friend of mine wrote, um, a, a, a wise woman. I'll, I'll find it in a second or I'll, I'll post on Facebook what the name of the title of the book is. But what she talked about is how we just, we're on autopilot. Like most of the yep. time we're not making decisions. Actually, uh, uh, Charles Duhigg in The Power of Habit talks about that as well. And so it's about coming back and becoming aware. And when you're at the grocery store, I know you're tired. It's the end of the day. If you live here in Redwood City, the line is 30 people long. Um, and you're just kind of trying to grab stuff. Really think through those decisions because in the long run, if you think about how many times you get to the grocery store, you're doing that, you know, once a week, twice a week, and every, you know, 52 times a year, that adds up. And those, that, that, that it becomes impactful on your finances one way or another. Um, is it correct when you're living alone, buying food is cheaper than cooking? It is a, it is a fine line. <laughs> yeah, I disagree with that in principle. I think that... You like to cook. Well, I like to cook, and it's really just a matter of, you know, especially, you know, with, with freezers, you can buy stuff in quantity, break it into smaller portions to cook with it. So it's a little bit of a different process. But I, I think that it is still cheaper to cook for yourself if you do, you, what you have to do is do it in such a way so that you don't waste, mm -hmm. all right? Um, yeah, and uh, again, what's the quality of the food that you want to make for yourself? Exactly. So, well, and that's, and that's exactly it is, yeah, a lot of, sometimes you can eat cheaper out, but what the long-term health consequences for that, and I'm, and I, and I'm not trying to be, you know, th th throw that controversy out there, but you know, depending on what your goals are, you know, weight gain, what, what you know, whatever that might be. But yeah, Kevin's right. This, if there, again, we teach an entire webinar, we teach an entire class on this particular subject. It's, it, if you did not have an opportunity to grow up sitting, you know, standing next to somebody in the kitchen, it can be very daunting and it can seem like it's just cheaper to go out and, and, you know, buy, pick up something on your way home, but it gets fatiguing. And if you can learn just a couple of simple yeah. things that you really enjoy eating yeah. at home, you're going to add actually time to your days as well yeah. through that process. If you take the time to, uh, make your own, make homemade soup, you can make homemade soup in a large quantity that will feed yourself for two weeks or more. But freeze it. Pre 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 <laughs> freeze it. And it will be, a lot better for you and 
at the and per serving, it'll end up being a lot cheaper than buying a can or Progresso or other or, 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 mm -hmm. or other foods. However, it'll take you it'll take you a good day to do that. You know, so it's a question of do you want to spend the time to do that, or would you rather spend time to do other things? You know, when I when I make a a, a big pot of soup, and I, I probably make it about a gallon at a time, or maybe two gallons at a time, it takes a day to do that. You know, make the stock and do everything else. I enjoy it, and I know that I'm creating a lot of food that's going to serve me and my wife for quite a while. So you know, I'll invest the time in it. There are other things to do. Yeah, so. and if that's if this whole idea of cooking is a new concept to you, I actually suggest. Um, I suggest investing in a slow cooker mm -hmm. and going out and uh, going online. There's a fantastic website called A Year of Slow Cooking. And this woman was genius because she bought a couple of slow cookers. And every single meal she cooked for her family for the entire year was made in those slow cookers. Mm -hmm. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. And then she got a book deal. A yeah. little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that was genius. <laughs> but a lot of those re recipes are on her website or buy her book. Another one to do is go look for, um, do a search for five minute meals. There are, I have, yeah. I have several uh, cookbooks that are called five minute meals and there, there's like five minute meals. There's, uh, like cooking with five ingredients or less. Type Jill, meals. Jill's Clancy. Uh, yeah. She's from Those Australia. Really she's got a great one on, um, I think it's called stone soup is, is the name of her website. And she's all about the five ingredients, simple, Healthy, wonderful, delicious. She's where I got the salted chocolate chip cookie recipe. There you go. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's a lot of chatter going on here. Instapots, I think, are actually good deals. I think that they're, you know, Instapots <laughs> and slow cookers are good deals because I, they're fire and forget. You put the stuff in there, yeah. you cook it, you don't need to worry so about it. So right now my mom is exploding because <laughs> she's in love with her Instapot. Oh, I, I, I've heard so many people with <laughs> Yeah, we have yeah. one. We use it at least once a week. Yeah. Very simple and easy to use and love it. Thank you, Mom. So uh, Carmel writes, you know, I need to stop watching Gordon Ramsay and James Oliver videos. There's nothing, you know, I know, I know you're joking. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with watching those things because you do get some useful hit uh, hints, but you have to realize that those are shows and they're designed to uh, awe you and to maybe in some case inspire you, but to be honest, they're really designed to entertain you and to show you how crazy and excessive people she, can be cooking. I would say not, not so much Jamie not, Oliver. Not Jamie Oliver. Yeah, not so much Jamie Oliver. Ashley, who is a fantastic resource if you don't know how to cook or you're a little bit, you've had some catastrophes, is Alton, Alton Brown. Alton Brown, yep. Yeah, because yep. he's all about the teaching the whys behind why something goes foul or yep. why, why it works. I want to loop back because um, this is something that you turned us on to and my wife and I have uh, certainly embraced it. And again, I'm, I'm sure this is just going to do more things to get your mom, mom excited, <laughs> uh, which is uh, Winco. <laughs> so Winco <laughs> is a Central Valley uh, grocery store. I don't know how they're everywhere. Yeah. They expanded a little bit. They're not. They're not. I tend to see them more in like in more rural areas than in city areas. For instance, we have to go to Vacaville to go to ours, mm -hmm. and you go to Fresno. You go to Fresno. Yeah, they're in Washington State. Yeah. yeah. Um. So Winco is just it's another grocery store, but they uh, have really good quality, really incredibly low prices. Uh, and so if you can find one and it's not too far away, really recommend you go check, check them out. My impression is that that's really where you want to go to feed your family at eight or 10. They, 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 they kind of have large quantity stuff. Uh, when my wife and I go there, we have to be a little bit more selective to try to find the right quantities. So if you're a single person, I don't know. What, what's your opinion on that? I don't know. You know, we're a family of three and we shop at Costco twice a week. Mm. Uh, I'll explain that in a second. Um, it's so my habit around Winco is my uh, my mom lives in Fresno, California, and when I go and visit her and bless her heart that she doesn't feel jaded that I'm doing this, but and sometimes she'll go with me, but we'll go, we'll go and visit and then we'll take a trip to Winco. It takes me about an hour to get through the store, but I am buying typically my canned items uh, for that I'm going to use for the next three months. Canned items, seasonings, uh, a lot of a lot of different things, and um, I'm willing to stock up. I know I'm going to use those items. Those, they're they're not going to become decorative. Yeah. Um, but I don't buy like meat products and, and things yeah. there simply because the three hour drive home. Yeah. But, uh, but it's that idea. The, the other thing about this too, that we want to be very careful of is, is that Kevin and I do really love cooking. Um, I, I actually, as long as I have the time, I really enjoy grocery shopping. It's a game to me. How much can I get of what I'm actually going to use and still have money left over at the, at the end? Uh, so for for me it's 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 a different and if you can look at pretty much all the, all purchases like that how can I buy what I want at the price I want to pay and still have money left over 
right? It's it's um, so I want to go back. Actually, let me see. These kind of tie in actually for for both oh, products. Um, so what I should get at Costco worth a somewhere versus somewhere else? Okay. Yeah, Carmel asked, just... Carmel asked the same question. So yeah, okay. it's gonna work out well. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through our family's grocery shopping habit. So we are a family of three. It's my husband and I. Uh, my son Dante is 12. We are we enjoy cocktails. We enjoy alcohol. We enjoy beer. Um, and we enjoy, uh, uh, we're carnivores, right? So these are not necessary. Oh, and my husband is, has been keeping the Coca-Cola industry or company in business for the last 20 years, however long we've been together. So these are not necessarily inexpensive items that we're purchasing. I have learned over the years what to buy at Costco, what makes sense and what to purchase at Safeway and what to purchase at Trader Joe's. I, this is a fairly new process that I have, but for the last four or five months, I actually go to the store twice a week. Hmm. Now, here's a caveat. I live three blocks from Safeway. Costco is right next to my husband's martial arts school. It's, it's, all, it's a couple blocks away from his martial arts school. I'm, I drive there four days a week, so I'm going by. So these stores are very convenient for me. If you live like my mom lived um, out in the country and to get to the grocery store, that was, so, so you have to take with a grain of salt what I'm saying. Now, what I do is I will typically, I'll go to Safeway on a Tuesday Right, I went last night, and I today's Thursday, right? Two nights ago. <laughs> Two nights ago. It's been a long week, <laughs> uh, but I'll buy what I need for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Okay, and then on Friday I go to, or I'm sorry, I go to Safeway and Costco because I'm only buying for three days what I need. I'll maybe at Costco I'll just buy a couple of things, but I'm also timing when I'm going in. I'm in and out in 15 minutes. Mm. Safeway, I'm in and out in 15 minutes. Then when I go on Friday, I'm buying what I need for the weekend, so Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. This has been like a, a revolutionary, like changed my whole life thing because I'm thinking in very finite. I only and planning is better. I'm I'm not forgetting as much stuff. I I'm not getting bogged down. I'm not having to think about what's on the you know what did I forget that's on the other side of the store. So so that's what's working for us. And I have a very specific things that I buy at Costco. And if anybody's interested, I can go into that list if you'd like, or we can just keep going so on. Let me just ask, what do you get at Safeway versus Trader Joe's? Okay, so Safeway, I will, um, let me tell you what I get at Trader Joe's, because this will be easier. Trader Joe's doesn't sell soft drinks, so obviously I'm not getting that. Um, if I, for whatever reason, can't get to Costco, I will buy my eggs at Trader Joe's. Eggs at Safeway are almost triple the price. And eggs are one of the biggest proteins in our, in our household, so it can get very, very expensive. Um, I will buy um, uh, yogurt at, at um, Trader Joe's. I will buy. Um, I'm trying to. Why am I? Why am I having a hard time with this now? <laughs> what do I buy there? There's. Um, uh, so oh, I know my husband's cheese habit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll well, buy that there yeah, versus buying it at Costco because I can buy it in smaller quantities and I don't have to invest variety, Dante's, yeah. you know, college fund and cheese. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, I'll think more on a second. You, uh, you caught me for a second. I don't know why I'm all of a sudden I'm blanking out. You say something. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tend to buy most of my... Uh, so I, I have a different philosophy. I really don't particularly enjoy uh, grocery shopping. It's something that, they have, that we have to do. And I will usually do it once a week. So mm -hmm. it, it's just... So I will take more time to go do it and, and, and go through the store. And again, you make this... One of the key things is making your shopping list coincide with the geography of your favorite stores all right so if you can organize your shopping list so you go into your store you go to one end of the store you go to your shopping list you buy all the products and you just work your way through so you're not jumping around in your shopping list you're not jumping around through the store so it's one pass through mm -hmm. and then and, and then you're done that makes that makes things a lot more uh, efficient and you, again you're not going to forget and it'll be you're not gonna you're not gonna get as frustrated so I, I i do tend i do tend to buy that I'll, I'll do the bulk of my stuff at uh at safeway i usually go to specialty stores for specialty things if i'm looking for a really weird cut of meat or a weird spice that mm -hmm. they're that, that that stores like that don't have um we lucked out my my wife works in petaluma which used to be the chicken capital of california and so she has a couple of places where she can buy farm fresh eggs. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's, it's really kind of interesting because it's all in the honor system. There's just a rack of eggs in a cooler out by the side of the road. And you go pick up a, uh, uh, you know, a dozen or 18 eggs and put money in a jar and 
nobody steals the money and nobody steals the eggs. It's kind of it, it, yeah, it's, it, like it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and the eggs are a lot better uh, for a yeah. lot of reasons. Um, uh, Petaluma's crazy fart from <laughs> from Robo City. You don't want to go yeah, to Petaluma to pick up your eggs. No, no, but she works there. So again, <laughs> yeah. it, this goes back to the listening. It's on the way. She's going the there way. anyway. Would I make a special trip to Petaluma to buy eggs? No, but she, but you know, she drives by the place every day when she goes to and from work. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not out of her way. Um, uh, but again, for me, it's just tailoring it to what you know. Again, to what I need. Almost everything that I need, uh, I can buy at at a Safeway or uh, a, a local grocery store. Um, you know, and the quality is 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 usually okay. If I want something really special, then I'll go to a real butcher shop and you know, get. Do that, or I'll go. Mm-hmm. You know, we actually do have a fishmonger's shop that you can get you know, cool. really fresh fish. And, and but you now the fish that you get at, uh, at at your grocery store, especially if you don't buy the package stuff, if you ask the 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 people behind the counter to select it for you, that stuff's only like two or three days old at that, and it's been yeah. you know it's it's, it's it's been processed right off the yeah. Right if it wasn't actually delivered boat. that morning, yeah, yeah. yeah. One tip I want to share with you really quick, and this is highly impactful. So we have Safeway is the big store here in the Bay Area. Uh, a lot of you have all these, or depending on where you are in the country, and um, watching this. So the um, Safeway will, or any grocery store, will have a weekly circular, right? And if you can start paying attention to that weekly circular, anything that goes on sale at a grocery store will typically go on sale in a six-week sale cycle. So, for example. Um, let me see what we've got here. Um, okay, so there's a couple exceptions. Uh, uh, soft drinks, I don't know if you can see this. If you're a Bud, Bud Light drinker or a Coors drinker, uh, right now, you know, you can get uh, that on sale. Soft drinks and beer and things like that, the, the big vendors like that will typically go on sale every every other week, right? But everything else, so let's say canned corn is on sale this week. What, what I will typically do is I'll inventory how much canned corn I have. Um, I will make cornbread almost on a weekly basis and I use a can of corn in it. So I want to make sure that it's not going to go on sale again. I want to make sure I have enough to get me through so I can make canned corn, uh, uh, cornbread until the yeah. next time it's on yep. sale. Right. And, and, and other various items. Now you may be thinking right now, this girl is nuts because she's like paying attention to saving 10 cents on a can of corn. And I get that and how that sounds. But the fact is that if I do that for everything, so that's one example. If I do that for every single item that I purchased, usually purchase, that goes on sale and time those purchases, I regularly walk out with on my receipt at Safeway saying that I saved 25 to 30 percent yeah. on and, my groceries. Yeah. And, 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 and what's a typical grocery bill for a family for a year? I mean, you're, 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 it's, we're looking at what, the, what maybe 500 a month? Four, four, so, four, yeah, our family is six hundred a month. Okay. Yeah. So that's seventy two hundred dollars a year, and we're talking about saving twenty to twenty five percent. You know, that's almost a thousand dollars a year. Yeah. That's a, that's that's travel that's money. A that's yeah. a va- that's <laughs> your vacation. So that's why it's impactful. Pay attention to that ten cent can of corn, yeah. and not from the perspective of frugality or scarcity. Pay attention to it and look at it and think about that is Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. It's just it's mindset. That's that's all it is. But really, the the dollars and cents count. But you've got to be careful about your emotions around it. Otherwise, it starts. It gets negative. Um, oh my God! You, <laughs> I want you to be my mom and dad. So, <laughs> my husband might have a problem with that. Yeah, your yeah, wife. Yeah, that, <laughs> but thank you. Complicated. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to follow up on that and tie in with one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite. Uh, uh, Savvy topics, which is to save the money you save. Oh, <laughs> okay. thank you for doing that. Yeah, it's a good so one. a lot of grocery stores, a lot of clubs, a, 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 a lot of stores have uh, like clubs and things like that, where you give them your phone number and they send you advertising and you get and and uh, and you and you get a discount. So you'll go grocery shopping somewhere and they'll come back and say, "Congratulations, because you're a member, you put in your phone number, we get to advertise to you. You saved." <laughs> Twenty dollars on this hundred dollar grocery bill. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's great. But what you need to do is when you get home, you need to take that twenty dollars and put it somewhere. Take it out of your wallet. Put it in your dresser. Take it out of your checking account. Put it into a savings account. But save that money you save so that you're, it's actually growing and you're doing something with it. If you just look at the receipt and go, "Oh, I saved twenty dollars," and don't do anything about it, 
that money's just going to go into vapor into cocktails, into Starbucks, uh, Starbucks or whatever. Yeah. So when you get those type of receipts, when you recognize those type, those type of savings, save that money yeah. that you save. Put it somewhere, and you'll be amazed. At the end of the year, you know, you're going to have five hundred, seven hundred, a thousand dollars that you just put together. That you didn't do anything to earn. All you did was give somebody your, you know, phone number. You, t you took yeah. five minutes yeah. at the at, after coming home, and you actually made that transfer. Yeah. This is huge. Um, when, when do I, I spend, spend them? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> yeah. So the when the time that you spend them is, see, I get so excited about money and <laughs> about spending. But the idea is, um, so your book makes it so clear how to take savvy steps. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> The the way the, the the when you transfer that money, it's not that you're just transferring it to some random savings account. One of our favorite places to put it is in our travel savings accounts. It's because that's yep. what we like to spend money on. We want to travel, and so that lets us build that travel savings account exponentially yep. over every pay period. So much money is going to that account, and we have a ceiling on how much money is going in there. Now that's another motivation, right? That that completely yep. changes the yep. way you're thinking about that money. So take the time. First of all, if you don't have a travel savings account or whatever. Specific savings account you want to make, go ahead and open we'll one. We'll do that, yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Carmel asked, <laughs> what book? Fancy, you should ask that. Living the Savvy Life by Melissa Tassetti and Kevin Gibbons. Uh, go on to Amazon and buy it and we'll get some money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good book, too, obviously. We really enjoyed writing it. We've got a lot of good reception. So. <laughs> circular, money is circular. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, now I'm all thrown off. What are we talking about? Uh, actually, we're starting to... Same, same, same. Yeah, we're, we're trying to... to, yeah. to uh, we should wrap up pretty soon, too. So, uh, so <laughs> one, one thing real quick about the um, savings accounts. We are a big... We do not get a kickback from the company. We should. Yeah, but we are yeah. actually a real big fan of Capital One 360. That's one of the yes. questions we very often get asked is, yep. what, what bank should I use? So Capital One 360 has a savings account area. So this is not the money market area. That's very, be very clear about this. This is the savings area. You can have, I believe, up to 15 different savings accounts. The interest rate is, I think, like one and a half, two percent that you get on it, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's bigger. Right than, now it's a lot. Yeah, than most banks do because um, they're not brick and mortar. And the other thing about it, and I think that this is incredibly powerful, is you get to name each bank account. And so you can say... Um, you know, when we went to Italy, our bank account for travel said Italy. It did not just say travel. There's a totally different emotion so around that. So very specific, very yeah. focused. That's a really good reminder. So yeah. A lot of our clients are also uh, have been talking to me about using Acorn. Uh, and I haven't investigated it, but that name is coming up more and more and more. So I need to go look at that. So that's another thing that uh, uh, to look at. And again, it, they, uh, it, it has the same idea. There's multiple savings accounts that yeah. you can target for specific purposes. So that, that's also another. Very, very yeah. powerful. But we, we've used Capital One 360 back when they were um, uh, orange. Um, ING Direct. We ING, write about ING them actually. Yeah. We write about them in here. I mean, we've been, yeah. the book came out in 2011. So yeah. I've definitely used them for a very, very long yeah, time. Yeah, 10 years. Solid. Yeah. Yeah, good yeah. We have two minutes left. So uh, one thing we need to say is that the next session we'll be doing will be on the 31st. He's looking at our wall calendar. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll look at our wall calendar. I never know. Yes. So noon uh, Pacific time on January 31st. Yeah, please join us. If there's something specific that you want us to talk about, let us know. Send mm -hmm. us an email. You can send to either Melissa at thesavvylife.com or Kevin at thesavvylife.com. A couple other things really quick. Uh, you're, you can find us on social media, Facebook. Twitter, the lot, LinkedIn, connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, also, we uh, invite you to go to our website, thesavvylife.com, publish articles there on a weekly basis. This week, I got passionate and I wrote two articles. Um, but on there, on that on that homepage, you can sign up for what we call the list. Mm -hmm. And the list is a weekly list that we email out. It's typically anywhere from two to three uh, uh, tasks, habits, or challenges that to do that week that will allow you to implement a savvy life and sustain it. It helps clients that we've worked with to stay engaged, right? Uh, to, each week, right? Do this one thing or, or try to try out this habit. So give it a try. It's free. Um, yep. but links to articles. In there. Yep. Yeah, links to articles, etc. So, and that'll allow you also, it'll let you know or remind you when our next uh, session here mm -hmm. on Caffeine TV, which yep. is actually in two weeks. Yep. Okay. All right. 
so I think that Carmel, you started to ask a question, and we and when we answered it, there is no cost to that newsletter. No, nope. uh, just yeah. put in just put in uh, your email address, and we'll put you on the list. Yeah, thesavvylife.com yeah. and the list. Yeah. And with that, thank you very much. You guys have a great thank week. Thank you all. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yeah, <laughs> See you in two weeks.